Hey guys, welcome to another video here on the Aviation Pro channel. In this video I'd like to give you a tour of my home cockpit. Now I've made videos like these before, uh, but in this one I want to go a little bit more in detail, showing you how I've programmed all the buttons and all that stuff. And I do enjoy flying in this home cockpit, it's always nice to make a good vets and flights, and especially a multi-group flight. So without further ado, let's take a look and step into my home cockpit. So first of all, let's start with the main system where the flight simulator of course runs, my PC. As you can see, um, this is what it looks like. It doesn't look very elegant. It's a uh, very you know, quick and dirty setup basically, uh, but it works well. As you can see, these are the specs. It's a nice system with a good uh, CPU, good GPU, and uh, two hard drives, one that has Windows installed and the other one uh, specifically for flight simulator and storing my video, video files. So it, it runs pretty well. I do have to take the side panel off to um, get rid of the heat, but again, it's a cheap solution. It works. Uh, of course, if you built a sim setup, I would recommend to get a good, nice PC case and a good tower in order to cool everything properly. But this works for me as well, and it runs flight simulator very smoothly. All right, so let's actually step in into the cockpit. Well, the uh, home cockpit that is. Of course, it's the goal of flight simming to get an as realistic experience as possible. And uh, you know, even with a simple setup like this, you can get it quite a long way. Uh, especially if you just set it up uh, with you know the design of a cockpit in mind. So as you can see, this is my view: two monitors, the oak in front of me, um, and I'll I have different panels and uh, yeah. Uh, joysticks basically that I will just uh, take you through uh, but it's very nice to fly from this position and you have a good overview of all the systems and what's going on beyond in the cockpit. Alright so for let's first have a look um, I'll, right here I have my first headset it's a Jabra UC voice headset um, works very well um, it kind of has an aviation like feeling um, nice fits nicely on the ears it's very light and has uh, you know good audio quality for flying on VETSIM. So first of all I have the joystick right here. I'm not using it as my primary flight control but as an extra joystick just uh, to have as a backup and I'm mainly using it as a steering tiller. So I've set the steer steering tiller axis in FSU IPC in order to be able to taxi my aircraft. As you can see I have set the head switch to pan around in the cockpit. I've done it through FSU IPC and chase plane. Now the way I did this is a bit tricky. Um, for example, uh, right here if I get, uh, for example, tilt up button of the head switch, you get, uh, uh, for example, control plus T, and then tilt or pan right, I've set to control plus H. But if you want to tilt diagonally, uh, you kind of have to mess around with the FSU IPC INI file, uh, like here. So, for example, this button is coded for control plus T, this button is coded for control plus H, and then I, um, you know, configured the button in the middle of that in order to pan around diagonally um, to have you know both of those um, instructions so the diagonal button goes for both control plus T and control plus H uh, together at the same time as you can see um, so that's a workaround in order to f uh, for chase plane to um, you know support multiple head switches because as you can see in chase plane you can only set one head switch and then uh, you can set you know another way of viewing controls by setting keyboard commands so that's the way I solved that so let's go ahead with the joystick um, now the the main button right here on the front is coded for um, control plus shift plus P which opens my GSX menu very easy if you for example vacate the runway uh, you can simply press that button quickly bring up the GSX menu in order to select the gate that you're arriving at the rest of the buttons here on the front are not really programmed, uh, you know, they code for the trim um, buttons and also for flaps up and down. But in practice I don't use that because I'm using my uh, throttle quadrant for that. But if I decide not to fly with the yoke, you know, fly quick and simple flight, I can still use those buttons for those functions. The buttons on the side here are mainly programmed in chase plane again. As you can see in chase plane you can easily assign a button and it allows me to, you know, quickly change views uh, you know from the outside so I can quickly show a wing view or you know the engine view or whatever uh, works very nice and then these two buttons over here I use those when live streaming in order to show or hide the iPad so I can show charge to you guys uh, during live flights then of course the push to talk button is very important right here on the side as you can see in FSU IPC I've um, 
uh, assign that button again to it has multiple functions um, as you can see it's now uh, programmed for control plus r but in the background it's also programmed for scroll lock and i've set scroll lock in vpilot as you can see as my main push to talk button so uh, you know if you in vpilot select a, a button of a joystick for push to talk button you cannot assign multiple buttons on different joysticks so the best thing to do is set a key like scroll lock and then through fsuipc uh, Figure different buttons of different joysticks to send out scroll lock. Then right here I do have a throttle lever, um, not really using it. Uh, again, just when I'm flying with joystick I can still use that as a throttle if I don't want to hook up all my yoke uh, stuff and throttles that come with it. Now right here I have an iPad. Um, I've just opened the Dropbox app, very easy. I simply upload charts that I download from AIP websites or VAC websites and upload them in structured manner as possible so I can easily view all the charts that I need. So as you can see, I have a list of airports that I can just um, you know, scroll through. Then I have different, um, you know, different types of charts that I can easily view. And you know, this is very essential if you want to fly on VETSIM. You need to have charts next to you. And you know, this way, it's very easy. You can just browse to any airport you need. And especially if, something, if you have something like a Nevergraph subscription, you can easily access all the charts that you need of whatever air airport in the world that you uh, are flying to. Moreover, you can also, of course, upload your flight plan and um, you know you can easily um, access any additional documents that you upload to Dropbox, like the QRH, for example. So this is a really, really essential tool for me um, when flying on VETSIM. All right, and then we continue ahead with the yoke. This is, of course, the famous SciTech yoke that I think is very well known among all of you. Just program them, um, you know, aileron elevator, very simple. Uh, not much to say about it. Uh, you know, it's a nice yoke, it, it, it has its flaws, but it, you know, in general, it does a fine job. So the first button of the yoke is of course the uh, push the talk button that I've set right here. Again, it goes for scroll lock in FSU IPC. And so while flying, I can easily uh, press and hold that button in order to transmit on VETSIM. The head switch, again, used to pan around in the cockpit. I've set it up as chase plane uh, as my main head switch. And the benefit of setting at least one head switch, um, you know, it, it, it really acts as an axis kind of. So it's, it's a bit smoother and you don't have to set up, you know, different commands for the diagonal buttons or anything in chase plane. Then I have the trim buttons right here, as you can see, uh, trimming up and down, just where you would find them on a real Boeing 737 yoke. You know, you want to have that control on your left thumb because you're, you know, you're going to be flying from the captain's seat most of the time. Then we have here the clock. Uh, well, I'm not really using it as a clock. I'm just using it as a button. In this case, the button codes for uh, the autopilot disconnect. Again, something that you would use your left thumb for if, if you would sit in the Boeing 737 cockpit. Then on the right here, I'm using the button on the right to, um, you know, as another chase plane view switch, uh, which works in order to uh, kind of look right and down in the cockpit, especially if you're making a sharp right turn, for example, that works very well. Then we head over to the buttons right here. Um, again, I'm just using them all as chase plane buttons, so I configure them in chase plane. Really allows me to quickly go to the view that I want, for example, switch between captain and first officer view. Or maybe I just want to quickly show the FMC. I can click this button. And, you know, I'm not really using these switches as control switches. I'm really using them to quickly um, set views. And this works very well because in the real aircraft, there are not really any switches here. So, you know, better just use them for chase plane. And down below, of course, I have the rudder panel. Um, now, uh, first of all, as you can see, my uh, fasting mechanism is a bit uh, weird. I had to kind of cut it open and extend it but uh, that's okay it works it keeps the yoke on the table and a rudder you know it speaks for itself a nice rudder by SciTech again part of the collection and of course also including the tow bricks which works very nice all right then we go over to the throttle quadrants as you can see um, these are SciTech throttle quadrants two of them one belongs to the to the yoke the other one is a separate throttle quadrant the one on the left is the old one which is a, a little bit jerky and dirty probably in the inside so the sensors don't work very well anymore and the right one is the new one so i for example here have i i have the spoiler axis now i made a separate video on this once on how i exactly configured this i would love to point you to that video if you want to see more detail basically what i've done is in fsu ipc i've set a range where it um you know 
it sets, uh, sends out a button um, that I've configured in the PMDG Boeing 737 FMC in the FS Actions menu, a button to bring the spoilers down and also armed. Now, as you can see in my uh, FS UI PC configuration, if I put the spoilers in this range, the spoilers go down. If I put the spoilers in this range, the spoilers go to the armed position. And then the rest of the axis is used to use as a regular spoiler axis. And this really allows you to, you know, uh, have a spe specific range where you know that the speed brakes is properly armed. Then we have the reverser axis, uh, kind of the same thing as you can see uh, in FSUI PC. I've set a range in the beginning of the axis uh, that cuts the throttle. So just to make sure that the throttle was fully idle, otherwise the reverses do not always engage, at least not on PMDG aircraft. And then the rest of the axis is again used as a reverser axis. Now again, the axis is not really smooth anymore. It's an old throttle quadrant, so you know, kind of moving about the place usually works to uh, make it a little bit smoother, but uh, that's okay. Uh, then we have the main throttles uh, over here, as you can see. Now, these are all, by the way, Throttle handles from cockpit sim parts uh, that were kindly gifted to me from uh, a while ago uh, when I was visiting the um, Boeing 737 simulator. It, it feels really nice, you know, you really have good, get a good feeling. Uh, the left throttle is a dummy. Again, it's because it's part of the old quadrant, I decided only to use the right quadrant, which is a lot smoother. So I don't have separate engine control, but at least using the newer quadrant. So uh, I can use that throttle much easier. As you can see, also buttons are included, auto throttle disconnect and token buttons, both on the left side and on the right side. So technically, technically you can also use the throttles with your left hand. And, uh, you know, these are programmed, again, via FSU IPC. They come with the cockpit sim part 737 handles. You can easily set a token button. Again, it codes for a key in FSU IPC. And I've set that key in the flight management system or the FS actions menu in um, the PMDG aircraft. All right, so it feels very nice. You know, you can just uh, open up the throttles to 40%, hit that toga button and then take off. And also on approach, you can easily disconnect the throttle, auto throttle um, very easily from this position. So, um, you know, this is kind of what I mean with uh, having the, you know, the setup even though it's very cheap and doesn't look realistic, you know, you kind of have that realistic feeling of leaving your hands on the yoke and the throttle as you disconnect the automation. Now, right here, I have another axis. Sometimes I set it up as a zoom axis, but currently it's not set. Um, and then the flap handle, you know, in the FSG OPC, you can easily set the flap handle. And um, if you want, you can also create your own detents. You need to read the menu or for that in order to uh, uh, know how to exactly do it um, but it works very well also you can just um, you know set the flap access and it, it will set detents automatically so that's as far as the throttles go um, let's go and take a look at the button right here of course they do come with buttons and it's very nice to have a lot of buttons right here at your disposal now the first button the up position is not really programmed and the bottom position is programmed for uh, the parking brake as you can see then all of these switches right here in the middle are fuel control switches. Again, I've programmed them through FSUI PC to send the key command. And then in the PMDG uh, key commands menu, I've set those key commands in order to, uh, in this case, cut the fuel flow um, for the fuel control switches. So as you can see, it works on the Boeing 737 as well. And then the outer switches don't work on the 737, but they do work on the 747. And then the outer switch, um, I've set that to Again, the same way, send a key command, and then in the key commands menu, I've set that to um, increase and decrease this transponder mode, which is very easy when you, for example, vacate the runway. Um, you can easily set the transponder to off while you're vacating. So if we look ahead, I have here my LG ultra wide monitor. The exact model is in the description. I have two speakers in the front, very cheap speakers. I also have two in the back. So I do have quadraphonic quadra sound, which is nice. Some aircraft, you really hear the engine sounds coming from the back. So that's very nice to have. Then right here, I just have my regular keyboard that I use normally. It's not labeled or anything. I do have my pen and paper at the ready at all times. You definitely want to have the pen and paper with you as you fly on VETSIM in order to quickly write down instructions. Um, then on the right here, I have my famous dirty old keyboard that is labeled. So 
it it works as any other keyboard but just when you're inside the sim when the sim is the active window i can i've just programmed a, a lot of buttons again through the key commands menu in the pmdg aircraft for example in order to control many functions of the aircraft inside the cockpit and i definitely recommend you to do this you know just find an old usb keyboard somewhere in the house uh, you know give it some nice labels and program all those buttons through your aircrafts uh, you know um, FMC or whatever kind of options they provide to set key commands and this is very easy so you don't have to use the mouse in the virtual cockpit all the time to control for example the EFIS or the MCP so my keyboard used to mainly include um, um, mode control panel um, knob switches and rotary switches but now it's mainly an EFIS panel but I still have some buttons to control some function of the MCP. Uh, the reason, of course, as you can see, is that I have now a separate FMC, a Boeing 737 FMC, uh, or MCP, sorry, by CP Flight. And this works very, very nice. It's a very nice module um, that I get, got second-handed a, a while ago. It's a little bit expensive, but if you can get it second-hand, it's a lot cheaper. So this just is an exact almost exact replica of the MCP that you would find on a Boeing aircraft. So it can control the course, auto throttle flight director, speed, heading, you know, this is something that you use a lot. So I'm very happy with this product, um, you know, especially if you fly on VATSIM, if you get a heading instruction, it just kind of feels cool to be able to actually use a nice, um, you know, knob to set the heading of your liking. So very nice to have and very easy to use. And, uh, you know, it kind of makes your home cockpit look a little bit more realistic. Then right here I have my second monitor. That's my old monitor. Um, just a Philips monitor that I got many years ago. Use it to, you know, open Viewpilot, uh, you know, to open my streaming software so I can keep an eye on things. And, uh, you know, especially n it's nice to have Viewpilot right here so you can easily look up frequencies as you fly on VATSIM. Now, one more thing that I need to mention, um, the device I'm recording with now is my phone and normally my phone is right here uh, on the base of the throttle and I use the Remote Flight Calm app in order to uh, use my phone as a radio, which is very, very easy, especially if flying on VATSIM. So I can easily use my fingers here to uh, control the radios that way, right? So um, that's very nice indeed. So that's basically my home cockpit. Um, on the right, I've got a few more things that are essential. So let's take a look course you need uh, to have a nice beer glass at standby after your flight so you can drink a nice beer if your flight has been successful of course water coffee also very important you really want to have that next to you as you fly your home sim then right here i have my old logitech extreme 3d joystick and basically the same functions this is used by my first officer tuan of course or by me if i'm sitting in the other other seat uh, in order to use the buttons to uh, you know, transmit on VATSIM for example. Also the same, exact same headset as my uh, headset on the left side. So uh, it doesn't really work as a joystick anymore because the axes are very old, but it's nice to use the buttons anyway. So as you can see, that is my home cockpit. I hope you enjoyed this little tour and uh, maybe you can draw some inspiration from this. As you can see, with a few materials and a bit of creativity, you can actually create a very nice sim setup for yourself. And my philosophy behind the cockpit is that I you know even though it doesn't look like a real cockpit I want it to feel like a real cockpit so I try to have the buttons as uh, you know at the same place as where they would be on the aircraft so that you when you stretch your hand to the right you know what buttons you're gonna touch for example uh, you know that you're gonna have the throttle or that you're gonna have the radio you know to the right of you and that you have to stretch your hand forward in order to control the mode control panel for example so um, you know that's kind of how I designed it and you know it brings me a lot of fun it's great to fly like this on VATSIM and especially multi-crew flights and also having the second monitor in that case is very handy so I hope you enjoyed this video uh, if you'd like to support this channel make sure you head over to patreon.com slash aviation pro um, your support would be very much appreciated and helps me to continue making videos for you guys so make sure you check that out uh, for now, I hope you um, subscribe if you haven't yet and make sure you give this video a like. That also helps a lot. So guys, I will see you next time.